Hello friends, welcome to another video here on the channel. It's been a hot minute since we did any competitive content on the channel, but with the February IC starting on Friday last week, it was a good opportunity to kind of jump in and start playing. So I could only play one of the days of the three, so I could only play on the Friday, was busy over the weekend, so couldn't get any extra games in, but finished on the Friday with a score of 14 wins and one loss, which wasn't too bad. So I was pretty happy with it. But as I say, it's a nice way for us to kind of ease back into competitive content. So I'm going to share with you the team today and we're going to have a couple of games and then end up with the rental code that'll be at the end of the video. So if you want that, check out the games to see how the team's piloted and we'll start off with the poker piss, which is linked down below. So here we go. Here is the team. It's made up of Grim Snarl, GMAX, Venusaur, Groudon, Zashin are our restricted core thunderous and tapu finny so the one thing that i would point out straight away was i made a little bit of an error with the grim snarl it should be impish here and it's definitely something i would change going forward the idea was with the ev investment with an impish nature you could take a behemoth blade from a max attack jolly zash in it just gives you that extra turn to kind of get a light screen or spirit break or even a scary face off so i think there's nothing wrong with the spread as it is i think just to make it a bit more optimal i would go for the impish nature Nature. you've already got the kind of support with the light screen anyway so that would be the only thing i would say about the the grim snarl here and then we move down to the venusaur pretty standard it is a, a weakness policy to play off the screens from the grim snarl obviously you've got the chlorophyll to play off the drought from the groudon that's a big kind of selling point for it the speed stat uh, allows you in sun to outspeed timid cure and white scarfed by one point so you get the jump on it every time and then obviously that translates into uh, everything kind of under that as well so i think he hit a speed stat of 142 with venusaur under the sun here got modders to maximize special attack hp just bulked it out just to get as much kind of bulk from it with the screen support as possible to allow you to utilize the weakness policy and honestly venusaur was probably the, the mvp of the the entire tournament for me which is probably no surprise to a lot of you we've got the groudon 20 speed allows you to outspeed base 100s after an icy wind from tapu finney which we'll get on to and then the rest is pretty much just bulk and maximize an attack to the point where precipice blades when it is hitting when you haven't got the sword stance it's doing as much damage as possible a pretty standard set with the citrus berry just to kind of prolong a little bit longevity very standard zashing kind of build here with the speed and the attacks that you're able to take things like kyogre water spouts and stuff like that which you know you're not going to be living with much but it does allow you a little bit of room for investment there uh, going for thunderous it is flavor of the month at the minute especially it pairs up really nicely with more also the team as well obviously you're going to be looking at intimidate abusers to shut down and slow down things like zashi and groudon it makes sense to play something like defiant thunderous here just to kind of play off and punish those intimidate leads from your opponent pretty standard set as well maximum speed just to make sure you're benefiting from that base 111 uh, speed stat and enough attack there as well to be able to do enough to your opponent brick breaks and nice interest in tech just because of how prevalent screens are with things like grim snarl at the minute at least brick break especially when you're not max does give you a way to take those screens away especially if you've kind of maxed already and then you've used those max air streams to get the speed advantage on the field uh the brick breaks really really useful for kind of just shutting down those final few pokemon and then the kind of odd pick i guess to the team was tapu finney i was worried about obviously being best of one tournament uh sleep powder spores butterfreeze picking up a little bit of usage which seems uh it, it's got a place it's got a niche for sure um but but that caused me some issues. Obviously, Amoongus and got Trick Rooms annoying. Uh, and Burn, in general, for Zashi and Groudon is going to be a little bit irritating to deal with. And Tapu Fini kind of stops all of that. So that was the main reason. The other reason is because it gives you such a nice switch in for kind of the big thing that Groudon doesn't like facing is Kyogre. Tapu Fini can switch into Kyogre's Water Spouts, Origin Pulses in the rain. It's not going to really worry too much. And then it gives you the ability to kind of stay around on the field, either Heal Pulse, Partner and Pokemon, or really disrupt through like Nature's Madness and Icy Wind and things like that. So as I say, the Poker Pace is down below if you want to try it out and stick around until the end of the, the video. And then you will be able to get the rental code for this team. So we'll hop in now and we'll see a couple of the matches from this weekend's IC. So for those of you that don't know, the February IC and like like other ICs is an international challenge and it is a worldwide event over the internet where you can register before the tournament online and then you can lock in a team where of six Pokemon register them 
per the rules and then you can go into the tournament you have 15 games per day uh, 45 in total and then you get randomly paired up with opponents when you start searching so you can see our first opponent here is quite an early on one in the uh, the tournament Kyogre, Grimmsnarl, Zashian, Ditto Kingdra and Ferrothorn. So a pretty solid rain team here. Kind of worried about the Ditto uh, more than anything. And got to worry about, obviously, the Ferrothorn endgame as well. So we've locked in pretty hard with our Sun mode. Feel like Venusaur can do a good job for us here to, to lead us off. Obviously, if we can get the screen support, it just gives a little bit more longevity for Venusaur to kind of take advantage of its bulk, general bulk, and then kind of utilize the G-Max Vine Lash, which is the, the residual damage from it is just ridiculous and can win games just by itself, really. So you can see my opponent bra bravely leads out with Grimmsnarl and Kyogre here against our Venusaur. Um, so the idea here is just to get a light screen up. There's not really much threat from a physical aspect here and then just get the G-Max Vine Lash, get some damage into this Kyogre. You can see my opponent keeps the Kyogre on the field and even if they switch out here, I don't mind because we're starting that kind of residual chip with Venusaur anyway and we get our light screen up. So we go for the max ourselves and as I say, we lock in with that G-Max Vine Lash into the Kyogre and what turns out to be quite a popular thing run this weekend was um, an Assault Vest Kyogre here. So we see the Grimmsnarl go for Fake Out. Not something so common they use on opposing Grimmsnarls. So it does catch me out here as they double in on our Grimmsnarl and uh, get rid of our support network here. But it does mean that Venusaur's kind of left alone here to just get an attack off. But as you can see from the damage from this G-Max Vine Lash, uh, Kyogre's pretty bulky anyway, but this is definitely an Assault Vest Ogre because it's just taken so little damage from that G-Max Vine Lash. So eating that up, easily um, and but we do the big thing here for us is we are able to switch into a ground on disrupt the rain we've got to be a little bit careful with how we're kind of um dealing with this situation because it's easy for my opponent to click the um the the max uh, vortex again just to get the rain back on the field with the kyogre so you know if they hit into ground on it's likely gonna be very close to a knockout and Groudon's pretty important to us because we need it for that end game Zashian. Um, so we decide to switch out uh, Groudon here just to make sure that we try and keep a little bit of weather control. We need to kind of wait out these Kyogre uh, max turns and we get Zashian onto the field and then we go for the Vine Lash into the Grim Snarl this turn. So we see it does fire off a scary face into our Venusaur. Not really too worried about it if I'm, t if I'm completely honest. And uh, the Kyogre opts for a uh, Hailstorm into the Groudon, which makes sense, changes the weather, slows our Venusaur down even more, getting rid of that Chlorophyll, and uh, sets the Kyogre to kind of uh, either knock out the Groudon or take it down the next turn without the sun on the field. We go for the G-Max Vine Lash into the Grim Snarl. The idea here was with the residual damage, we should have enough to take it down as long as the screens don't go up. And as they didn't, that's great. It's a good return for us as we see the, the Grim Snarl drop to the, the chip damage from the hail and the G-Max Vine Lash. So um, it means that my opponent does have a free switch in here, but with one turn of our max left each, uh, we're not sitting in too bad a position here. So there's Ashing coming onto the field for my opponent now and uh, obviously does pose a threat and there is always the threat here of, of my opponent doubling in on the Venusaur here, maybe thinking that there's Ashing protects. But at the same time, I think, you know, I think you've got to make a, a choice here. Does my opponent really, what does it worry about more, the Venusaur or the, the Zashian? And I think you probably want to get rid of the Venusaur and then Kyogre's probably, you would think maybe in enough range to take a Behemoth Blade from us. So you see the uh, opposing Zashian goes for our, our Venusaur. We are able to take that without the Reflect up and uh, we can return back onto the Kyogre and uh, it kind of turns out a lot better for us where we're able to get the, the knockout onto their um, Dynamax or yeah Dynamax Pokemon here as the Kyogre drops and they're not so it does allow us an extra turn here with Venusaur and it means with the Kyogre off the field we've got weather control going into these last few turns which is really really important for us and get some super nice damage onto the Zashian in return with a big Max Quake getting that uh, special defense boost switch really doesn't pay off uh, for the remaining Pokemon as you're going to see in a minute with my opponent's last Pokemon coming in. It is in fact going to be the Ditto which uh, is going to be able to come in 
and uh, copy our Zashin, which is currently out on the field, which isn't really a bad thing. You can see the, the G-Max Vinelash residual damage, how valuable it is here, especially with that hail chip. And that was one of the reasons why I didn't want to switch Groudon in that last turn, because if I got rid of the hail, it means that this turn, we can't double protect like we're about to do and then get rid of one of the Zashians, and then, you know, one Zashian is easier to deal with than two Zashians, 100%. And we've already seen my opponent's Zashians max speed, it does outspeed ours, so it would be able to kind of pick ours off from the range that we're in at the minute. Uh, with Venusaur being on minus two, we're not gonna be able to make use of Chlorophyll without kind of switching out Venusaur into Groudon, taking damage is probably a bit unnecessary here, so, Best play, in my opinion, here is just to do that double protect. Get rid of one of the Zashians as they uh, behemoth blade into our Zashian, as you can see here, and uh, just kind of they split their decisions across the board. But the uh, the double protect coming in massive for us here with that last turn of G-Max Vine Lash, something that they're not able to avoid here as the hill does take a round of damage, takes our Venusaur down, but opens the door for our Groudon to kind of hit the field this next turn. And it's kind of Groudon Zashian versus the one Zashian now. And you would imagine with the Ditto, it's probably, you're going to assume that it's Scarfed. So it's going to be locked into Behemoth Blade, making it quite easy. My opponent only has the choice of one uh, or like the Zashian or the Groudon. So one of the options on our side of the field and both of our options are going to be able to pick up a knockout. So pretty nice early win for us against a, a pretty kind of explosive hyper offense it's not hyper offensive but pretty heavy offensive team and uh, i think we just managed the board pretty well here with our weather and um, picked our turns to to get uh, groudon in get it back out safely um and it i think we were pretty fortunate with the max hailstorm i think if it had been a max geyser obviously with the sun being up we still would have probably taken a bit more damage than the max hailstorm so zashin probably in a bit better shape than it would have been in some other situations but uh groudon i gotta take my hat off to it because it performed super well for the entire weekend didn't miss a single precipice blaze which uh rarely rarely happens but we do pick up our first win and that that moves us into our next game which is going to be a another interesting one as you can see, again, pretty early 1500s against another Japanese player. Hit him on top. Thunderous, another Kingdra, Zashian. Obviously, we're going to have the Sableye, and then we've got Kyogre rounding up. So it's going to be another kind of Kyogre Zashian team here. Got to worry about the Sableye because it's going to have that Rain Dance priority. You've got a lot of Rain Abusers in the team as well with the Kingdra. Um, but we just need to kind of maximize um, our weather mode here again. I've opted to bring Tapu Fini here over Zashin. I feel like it's going to be more useful against what my opponent's got. Gives us an extra switch in to the Kyogre. If it's out on the field and we've got Groudon out, we just need to make sure that we've got that Tapu Fini in the back so we can kind of get it, get it onto the field so we can kind of cycle that weather. Uh, obviously with the Thunderous as well, if that is a prankster version, then you've got to worry about rain dance from that side of the field as well as things like e Impulse, which can slow things like a Venusaur down. Um, but we're pretty free here. We can um, just go for the light screen and then the G-Max Vine Lash and get that residual damage started. Because if this is a prankster thunderous, that residual damage is going to be really, really valuable for us going forward. So as you can see, turn one, we do lock in and max our Venusaur here. Straight off the bat, it is a, a Prankster Thunderous, not the more common one seen at the minute, but still a very valuable support member. So they fire off the Thunder Wave into our Venusaur, completely slowing it down, taking away any uh, advantage we would get with a Chlorophyll uh, boost if the sun's on the field. And then we take a Water Spout after a, a Light Screen from our Grim Snarl. So everything on our side of the field hanging on. Kyogre here. Taking that Vine Lash pretty well, to be honest. Taking a lot of damage, but the um, the the residual damage here not quite enough to pick up the Kyogre, but putting a really decommission in it here um, from that Water Spout damage. It's still got the opportunity to max, but it kind of makes your opponent think now: Is it worth maxing a Pokemon with such low health? And it's probably not. So we kind of discount that from being a max on this turn. And um, so thinking that the Kyogre might be safe till later on in this game knowing how important the weather war is going to be go for rather than a vine lash go for a max quake just to get these special defense boosts up to uh, give us a little bit more staying power against things like 
Thunderous, it's going to be a special attacker predominantly, and the Kyogre. Uh, but we do see it switch out for Hitmontop. I was kind of hoping it would be the Zashin maybe switching in there, but pretty dangerous switching Zashin in in any situation against a Maxmon, so not really likely. But we do see a Thunder come out onto Grimmsnarl. A bit unfortunate that the Thunder does get a critical hit. It does pick up the knockout onto Grimmsnarl, um, so we do lose that. But we do get the Max Quick into the Hitmontop and get some decent damage onto it. And then when you stack that with the residual damage again, you're, you're seeing how how effective this residual damage is it just really making pokemon that you can't hit necessarily for big damage uh, a lot more manageable so at this stage it gives us a nice opportunity there is uh, obviously the kyogre in the back but if the kyogre switches in at any point now you've got to think that it's going to take that residual damage get knocked out and if we go for an attack here and it comes in on it it's going to get knocked out it's got such low health here they do have an active fake out of course um but really with the sun up the thunderous isn't posing too many issues right now got to worry about uh, weather ball but with the sun being up don't need to worry right this second um there is obviously the play that my opponent could make by switching in the kyogre for the him on top and weather ball and with thunderous but uh, i decide to go for a sword stance to try and punish a play where they don't go for a fake out into the ground on here and we do see a rain dance from the thunderous here and just the fake out so a really passive turn from my opponent uh, we do a flinch from a ground on so don't get anything there and unfortunately uh, our venusaur is fully paralyzed which is a little bit frustrating because it's just nice to be able to get at least the majority of your turns uh, used when you are in that Gigantamax uh, form but unfortunately that is just how it goes sometimes now we do lock in with the weather ball here into the thunderous because I think with the weather ball from a Venusaur and then the residual damage it should hopefully be enough depending on the item from the thunderous to kind of pick up the knockout so that's what we lock in we keep Groudon in the back because we want to try and dictate the weather really so keep that weather for another time um obviously hit him on top going for the y guard protecting against a potential rock slide here so uh we just see a thunder which is probably the best option from the thunder it's kind of indicating that it doesn't have weather ball because i think it would have used it if it had uh going for a thunder and uh, venusaur again paralyzed which is really unfortunate uh but the, the the residual damage really helping us out here as we do see a citrus berry activate on the thunderous so just giving it that health back that it's just lost uh but you know him on top right now and not a great position it's going to get knocked out you've got to think that the um the venusaur is uh the, the kyogre as well really low health so my opponent really down to their last they're kind of bare bones here but you know we're not in a great shape as well we've got a ground on in the back but against a kyogre uh, we don't know its speed stats or anything like that so we need to be a little bit careful with how we go about closing this game out thunder coming out from the thunderous here into our tapu finny we take that pretty well uh, and get the scald off into the thunderous here and uh, i think we pick up a critical hit whether or not that mattered or not probably did to be honest but you can never tell uh, but we get fortunate where we uh, we do pick up the knockout onto the thunderous and get rid of it off the field which is good and finally get an attack off with venusaur uh, to remove the hit on top from the field so my opponent down to their last two pokemon here and you've got to assume that it's going to be the Zashin and the Kyogre as we see the Kyogre hit the field uh, with very little health. And it's a little bit unfortunate that um, the Tapu Fini has taken that Thunder because we are in Behemoth Blade range for sure from the Zashin right now. So it is a little bit concerning to try and get a move off. So the, I think the big thing is if we can get rid of the Kyogre, Groudon can come in and pretty much deal with the Zashin one-on-one -on -one or should be able to, especially with a single target Precipice Blade. So really at this point, I decide to click in for the Icy Wind. Um, not really thinking that the Zashin would be max speed. I think that's my big gambit here. Um, when it probably would have been better, I think just to double target into the Kyogre. Just to get rid of the Kyogre would have been the big play here, but we decide to go for the Icy Wind play and um, then I think a, uh, an Earth Power as well into the Zashin. So just to get damage off onto it. So we do see the Behemoth Blade come into the Venusaur here as we do fire off an Icy Wind, manage to connect, which is great. Fortunately, not quite enough to take down that Kyogre, just on a, a wisp of health, but we do hit, we do get that speed drop onto both um, targets, and then we've got our full health Groudon to come in. So we're still sitting in a good position here, as long as we outspeed the Zashin, 
this next turn with with our ground on then we we kind of lock this up and um, we know that the water spout is just not going to have the power it needs and even uh, an origin pulse here from the Kyogre won't be enough to take down our ground on with the sun on the field and um, so it's just all about being able to outspeed the Zashin. Now we could here be a bit more cautious. We could protect Groudon here and then just Icy Wind, um, but it wouldn't really put us in any better position if the the, the, uh, the Zashin does start speed us. Kind of turns out that the Kyogre is obviously scarfed. We can tell that from the previous turn as well. Um, where it does fire off an, an Origin Pulse. Unfortunately, not able to hit the ground on here, so we do get a little bit fortunate. The Icy Wind coming out again from the Tapu Fini. And with Tapu Fini's speed stat, outspeeding the ground on by one, I know 100% because we've got the Icy Wind off, we are going to outspeed this Zash in. So, yeah, the Presby's Blade be able to come out and uh, lock this one up, which is really nice. And it was a bit touch and go at times where you thought, Ooh, how how is this match going? And you know, you feel like it's kind of slipping away from you with the, the text that you see on things like um, Pranks of Thunderous and stuff like that with the Rain Dance. But fortunately, it did kind of pan out in the end. And I think the, the work Venusaur put in early on really paid off. So our next opponent up is Sogaleo, Rillaboom, Thunderous, Calyrex, Shadow Rider, Incineroar, and Grimmsnarl. So this is the final one for today's episode that will feature. Uh, this is against a, a higher rated Japanese player on the Friday evening when I was playing. 1648 rating. Um, and Sogaleo was definitely one of those Pokemon coming into this tournament that I was a little bit worried about. Obviously, we have got Groudon, so we do have a decent enough matchup against it but if it does get its weakness policy procced and a few steel spikes unchecked then that defense is going to make it very difficult for us to, to kind of take down and it hits so hard and we've got no way to kind of mitigate uh, its attack stat because we haven't got uh, will o wisp and obviously intimidate doesn't work on it not that we've got intimidate anyway so they lead off with the calorex shadow rider and the sol Galea. so i'm i'm fully expecting a weakness policy proc here but um we max venusaur in this instance and i want to protect ground on this turn from any um will-o-wisp from the the shadow rider calyrex or just an astral barrage as well i just want to try and get the residual damage onto the field and i also want to get some damage and remove the calyrex i feel like once the calyrex is off the field it gives zashian a way freer time against the rest of the team and um, zashian can then outspeed naturally everything on the field so as you see we do protect the ground on this turn just to make sure that we've got that kind of staying power and go for the vine lash into the shadow rider calyrex and uh, do some really sizable damage. Now they do switch out their Sorgaleo into the Rillaboom. So the grassy terrain is on the field right now. So we do get that kind of um, attack boost as well, which is nice. Um, and the residual damage, not quite enough to take down the Calyrex though with the residual damage and the grassy terrain giving that little bit extra longevity. So here, uh, I just want to keep Groudon and need to preserve Groudon for later on this match. Really important Pokemon for us. Um, and I'm going to switch it out for Grimmsnarl here. Makes sense to switch it in right now. Allows us then to get our screen support up and gives us a little bit more kind of a buffer against what my opponent's trying to do. So we want to avoid Groudon taking any damage from the Rillaboom as well, especially with the grassy terrain on the field. And switching Grimmsnarl in here just means that we'll be able to take at least. Uh, a grassy glide and then hopefully be able to utilize our screens the next turn so as you see we do switch the ground on out to grimstall and then get the max flare off into the rillaboom hoping that we'll be able to take that down there's no need to really attack into the calyrex shadow rider in the last like this turn because the residual damage is going to knock it out anyway so it just seemed pointless going into that slot where we did see it actually switch out for incineral which is down made its way onto the field and now with the rillaboom off the field it does make it a bit easier to try and get our screen support set we do have to worry about a fake out from the incineral here and um, if we're unable to get our reflect off it is going to make it a bit more difficult but you know you've got to just click you've got to click it you've got to try and get it up we could switch out but it's probably unnecessary to switch things in and take unnecessary damage at this point i think the one thing that's more expendable than anything else at this stage to me anyway is definitely the grim snow so the reward of just getting the reflect off will just be a bonus for us for the rest of the match as we do see my opponent max their Solgaleo here uh, we don't see a fake out from my opponent so it kind of indicating that we'll see an attack into the venusaur from the incineral here as we just go for the max quake and one of my things I was thinking here as well, with the Max Quake option, it does give us that buffer and special defense as well. So it makes it a little bit easier for when that Shadow Rider Calyrex comes back onto the field because you've got to think that 
uh, if we don't have that special defense boost and we don't have a light screen it's going to be able to probably pick up or sweep through a lot of the team with astral barrage depending on its build we do see the Sogaleo go for a max steel spike into the grim snarl so just picking up a knockout there and getting that defense boost and the other thing is as well i really want to kind of hold off hitting into the Sogaleo when it's max to proc the weakness policy that's one of the things i want to try and avoid now we do see the incineral go for a flare blitz but behind the reflect that we're able to get off do take that pretty well especially in the sun it does activate our weakness policy uh they take a bunch of recoil damage and um they're going to be in range to go down this next turn so we're sitting pretty pretty happy at this point obviously we've got to stall out two turns of the sogolers max turns but without its weakness policy kind of activated uh we're not too worried this is our last turn of our max with venusaur as well so um we are going to then switch into groudon here just to give us that a little bit of um more pressure i guess for the soga layer to kind of concentrate on because i think you're probably more worried about the ground on than you are the venusaur even though the venusaur has just um had its weakness policy boosted so i'm gonna take this turn where we're, we're splitting my opponent's decision here with the soga layer so trying to get a sword stance off with ground on if we can that's great if we take an attack not ideal but we do have the reflect up we are going to be able to pressure a lot more though with ground on this next turn if we can get the sword stance up and especially if we come away unscathed go for the earth power just to get rid of the incineral just want to take away the option for my opponent to have the parting shot or any extra damage that they don't necessarily need to um, and then we see the steel spike come out from the Solgaleo uh, giving that defense boost again as we go for the sword stance with Groudon and like I say you know splitting our opponent's decision here but we've got a full health Groudon with a sword stance under its belt and a reflect up so we're sitting in a really nice spot uh, we've just got to worry now about the Shadow Rider Calyrex that's going to be able to kind of come in and disrupt us here. Now it comes down to like 50-50s mind games, all sorts here because my opponent is going to have the Calyrex out on the field. Do they protect it here? Uh, I don't know. Like, or do we protect Zash in here and attack with Groudon? I opt to play it a little bit safer, protect with Groudon, see out the last max turns from my opponent's Solga Leo, and then just try and get rid of this Calyrex with uh, Zashin, even if they go for the Will O Wisp into the Zashin here, a Behemoth Blade is going to be enough to take down the Calyrex. Um, so that is the plan for us here. Um, I didn't actually think that we'd see a Bulldoze at this stage in the match, but it does make a lot of sense. You kind of want to uh, boost the attack power on the Sogaleo while you've got it on the field, while you've got it maxed, and obviously reducing the speed stat of the Zashin as well. So I think we're pretty fortunate here. Uh, that they don't go for the steel spike into our Zashin because I think if they go for it into the Zashin here there's probably a good chance that they pick up the knockout onto us but they do opt to uh, go after the Groudon and that's primarily because we went for that sword stance and it's such a big threat where Zashin doesn't really threaten Sogaleo so much more so that was one of the things that I had in my decision making for that protect here and we are able to get the Behemoth Blade into that Calyrex which is a huge deal for us on the last turn of their max as well with the Sogaleo which means now that we should be able to close this up with Groudon now depending on what my opponent's uh, Sogaleo has normally carrying something like Earthquake and a little bit um, unfortunate I think Grassy Terrain is going to end this turn as well. So if it has got Earthquake, this is something that was going through in my mind at this point, where the Grassy Terrain was like, if it stays up and they, they finished their max turns and they got Earthquake, we'll easily be able to end this game pretty easily because they've not got a way to really um, double attack us for, for effective damage. But uh, unfortunately, Grassy Terrain ending, um, as we do see the Earthquake from the Sogaleo here, um, and it does a good chunk to Zashi in taking it down. But you can see how well that the Groudon's able to take that behind the Reflect here um, and uh, really pile on the pressure now. Even though they have got that plus two defense stat, we are going to be able to uh, to uh, chunk it right down and uh, set it up for a win and uh, close this one out. I was worried at this point. I was thinking if Precipice Blades misses, can we can we take two Sunsteel Strikes, which we're going to see now. Um, and I think it would be really touch and go. You know, I think our Citrus Berry does proc here um which may allow us with a with a with a low roll to take another sun steel strike so we'll, we would at least get two chances to hit our precipice blades here i would imagine so um it 
kind of would be all right in this end game but no we don't even need to consider that because Groudon just with his goggles on is able to hit and um, we do wrap that one up and like I say that uh, probably the three most enjoyable matches from my perspective shows the team working quite well um, as I say I could only play the Friday so we only played 14 games but uh, we finished with 1684 from the Friday 14 wins one loss which was nice so friends that is the team and uh, right now I'm going to throw up the rental code for you all and you can see it on the screen right now we've got the Grim Snarl we've been through the team um, the only thing that I would say I would change if you're personalizing for yourself would be the nature on the Grim Snarl I'd definitely consider changing that and maybe you want to go faster on the, the Venusaur as well to outspeed you can go uh, a little less um, HP investment and special attack and go for a bit more speed on Venusaur to get the jump on other things but all in all I think the team is pretty well put together and it'll give you some nice options if you do try it out online and just to make you aware if you did play in the international challenge over the weekend you can now go on to the uh, mystery gift option on your copy of sword and shield and collect your shiny gift which is the uh, shiny galarian articuno which is now available to be downloaded so you can grab that for yourself and that was the the gift from playing a minimum of three battles in the international challenge over this weekend so if you've enjoyed uh the content today let me know if you have if you've got any questions about the team if you try it out definitely let me know if you have tried it out it's uh, it was a lot of fun to build the team and put it together and then play it in the ic and like i say it's nice being back into competitive content after such a long break out um, but i feel refreshed feel good especially with live events coming back so we're going to continue to roll out competitive content on the channel um, and if you've got any preferences for things you'd like to see in the coming weeks let me know and we will cover them and uh, touch on everything that we can in the lead up to the uh, start of live event and if you enjoyed this video make sure to check out our other VGC content on the channel I'll link a playlist to our previous VGC uh, videos that we've got on the channel and might inspire some ideas for you going into series 12 so do check them out Stay tuned, sub, if you want to stay up to date with all of our competitive content when it does roll out. And I will see you all for another video very soon. So until then, friends, take care of yourselves and bye-bye.